Uh, let me see. Got the bread, the milk. Uh, oh, sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, I was just going over my list of, uh, you know, stuff I'm going to need for to uh, for the uh, 23rd, seeing the world's coming to an end. Not going to happen, guys. Not going to happen. Plain and simple. Um, please don't be sucked into that. Okay. Um, I, I see it's everything from the rapture is going to happen, World War Three, uh, Planet X. Uh, so, and they're even talking about August and all of these, you know, planet this, that, and our body's going to come and slam us. Please don't get sucked into the hype. It's absolutely BS. Um, you know, uh, one of the questions uh, Billy Carson and myself was uh, asked was, uh, do solar flares have anything to do with earthquakes? There's not a direct correlation. Let's just put it that way, okay? There isn't a direct correlation. In fact, I can probably take this over here. Okay. This this guy here, it's called The Sun Today, and if you... If you, it's done by Alex Young, PhD, and uh, he'll go into this and tell you he's done this graph. He did it like an overlay, and between and you can see it here from 1990 to 2011. Okay, you've got. Um, you can see where he's done it. Let me see if I can go back to this. Let me see. Um, this is what it looks like. You got, and if this is this is they they here's, here's what he says. We've had magnitude sevens on the solar minimum as well as the maximum. So is there a direct correlation? I don't believe there is. You can have CMEs, which is a coronal, coronal mass ejection, giant flare, that nine out of 10 times, if it's gonna do anything, it's gonna interfere with communications. It's gonna interfere, interfere with like our satellites, GPS, so on and so forth. That's when you're gonna get a problem. And of course, you're gonna see the, the Aurora Borealises and stuff like that affecting our magnetosphere and all that other stuff. But you're not gonna see, um, you know, just because there's a CME or whatever, it's gonna to total like, uh, we're gonna have earthquakes everywhere. Um, and to be honest with you guys, we have earthquakes all the time. I mean, we have them continuously. But he does say, um, let me do it this way. I don't know why that did that, but um, it says, what would something that is correlated with solar activity look like? Now, I think I'm trying to remember if this was the blue or the red. Um, okay, the earthquakes are in the red here. And, of course, the solar uh, ejections are in the blue. Okay. Um, so, you can see there's really, you can see there's, there's uh, earthquakes here, here, here. So, in other words, it's not during a CME or any kind of uh, stuff like that. What would something that is correlated with solar activity look like? Well, this is what it would look like. Here's an overlay. And you can see a direct correlation if that was the case, because red is the earthquake and blue is the actual uh, the activity of the sun or solar flares, right? So not really going to happen, guys. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Uh, don't sweat the small shit. Um, and, you know, of course, if you, got, if you read this page here, um, this is all interesting stuff. And if you guys, anybody who's interested in, or who is in ham radio, CB, shortwave, you know that there's an 11-year cycle on solar, uh, okay? And right now, we're at going to the lowest peak right now. Um, and you can see it right here. You got two, uh, 1985 up to 96, which is 11 years. And, of course, the peak was somewhere around 90, 91. Um, that is just about, and then we went up to this one here, which was in... Uh, 96 to, was it, 2017. Um, 2018 is when that cycle is going to end. The new cycle is going to start up, and you see right here is in 2019 to 2030. And, of course, the height of that one there will be somewhere roughly around 20, well, it says right there 2020, um, but it's going to be going to 2030. And you can see the height of that. We've already had it. You know what I mean? But the next one, 2019, and then it's going to, once it goes up to 2019, it's going to actually stop back up and it's going to be, so give or take, if you say 20, it's roughly around 20, 25, give or take one year. And that's going to be the height of that solar cycle. Um, and you can see that, you know, waiting for the next sunspot cycle, 2019 to 2030. Guys, don't sweat it. Come on. Don't, don't sweat it. You know, these people are, you know, that's all you see. Do you see, and let me ask you guys a question. Do you see any of it in the mainstream, uh, you know, news? And some people say, well, no, because most of it's fake news and you probably wouldn't see it. I can promise you, go to these real sites that are uh, professional astronomers, so on and so forth. They'll set the, 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 the record straight, okay? Um, and for earthquakes, as far as earthquakes, this stuff happens all the time. Here's a, here's a map of this right here of the United States as well as the world. Here you got the, 
you know, uh, South America, Africa, and all of them. And you can see right here, 30 days magnitude, 4.5 plus. And the U.S., of course, and is showing others as well. And guess where they're at, guys? It's, it's nothing, it's not even a secret, man. Um, you can see there's a whole bunch of them next to Guatemala. And this thing's not cooperating. Um, let me drag this this way. You got Honduras. But look at these. These are all along fault lines. Okay. If you notice, they give or take, they're around or on the fault line. Okay. So you can see them right here. There's been multiple ones right here. You can see this one here. I just clicked on that one, the first one. It's uh, 15 kilometers southeast of uh, Soda Springs, uh, Idaho. Okay. If you do, let me see. Let me just back up just a hair bit. I'm going to back up. And you can go all the way up to, let's say, Alaska. Um, these things, if you notice, they're not very far from the fault lines. And this happens all the time. This is nothing. Now, if you go up to the settings on this, and you guys will get this page. I'll give it to you. Um, let me just get myself out of the way here. Um, you can see uh, 30 days magnitude, 22.5 plus. So you're going to get a whole lot more. What it did was it showed the... Um, let me wait for it to pop. And let's see. Move this up. Let me get rid of this too. Uh, let me see. Okay. Now you can see there's a whole bunch more from 2.4, uh, I'm sorry, 2.5 magnitude all the way up. Now look at the Don. Come on, guys. Look at this. Look at this. Look at them all. And they're mostly near a fault line. Oh, pretty darn close. Okay. Now... How about the man-made earthquakes? That's what I'd be more afraid of. Like when you got this guy, uh, uh, Kim Jong-un, whatever his name is, whack job over there from South Korea. I mean, I'm sorry, North Korea. Uh, sorry about that, South Korea. Um, you know, you got these, this guy here. Now, if you were to set off some kind of bomb or missile or whatever it may be, and it happens to be near a fault line, okay, guess what will happen? That could cause an earthquake, and it doesn't have to be in that immediate area. The epicenter could be miles upon thousands of miles away, just a vibration in the crust. That's all it is. That's all this stuff is. And on top of that, you know, like I said, people have said, you know, uh, I know what causes earthquakes, tectonic plates, so but they can be man-made. How about all of the fracking going on? How about the uh, oil, the millions of gallons, different countries in the world are doing this, Millions of gallons are being taken out of the ground. What's being put back in? Nothing. Now, some of them, they're trying to fill them back up with water. Do you understand how big these caverns would have to be of millions of oil to come out to totally dry this, this whole cavern up of all this oil that's in the ground? You have a major underground cave-in. That's about, that, that's going to make, you're going to feel an earthquake out of it, I promise you. So, guys, don't get all bent out of shape. I mean, look at this. I mean, this is crazy. You know, look at this. These things are everywhere. Look at all down here in uh, Central America and uh, Mexico, Guatemala. Uh, you know, you got Cancun. You got all. Look at this. All next to fault lines. This is not. This is not anything that's. You know, it's nothing hidden. You can find this yourself if you go on the USGS site. Now, a lot of people. I have to admit. Now, the world people go. No, you don't understand, man. There's there's earthquakes. There's now. Um, a couple of, uh, one or two volcanoes just became active. Um, we've got Hurricane Irma, Jose. Uh, we got, I mean, people are going, oh my God, the world's coming to an end. We got forest fires in the United States as well as Canada. I agree. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. But keep in mind, Irma, the hurricane itself, it got powerful and it stayed that way because of warm water. That's what they feed on, warm ocean. It's roughly around 85 degrees everywhere this thing traveled right into Florida. I mean, so this is the, what kept it alive. If you notice where Jose went, where it went up the coast, started dying off. Why? It's a lot colder water there. There's not a whole lot of it. So, and understand, check into, um, uh, when you check out El Nino and El Nina, if you check out El Nina, this thing's not cooperating today. It's giving me shit. Um, let me see here. And it's just lagging here. But anyway, when you look at El Nino, it's supposed to be somewhere up around just below uh, Alaska is going to be like the warmest part of the ocean. So most of ours, at least they're saying, you know, uh, they're predicting a little bit warmer temperatures for, you know, my area. Let's go, well, not warmer, but around normal uh, weather. So for the winter. So that I wouldn't worry about. And as you can see, it'd be up around here. It's supposed to be up right in here in the Pacific Ocean next to the uh, Alaska and stuff like that. So. It's supposed to be, something's supposed to be slightly above normal. We're going to be around normal, so on and so forth. 
nothing to worry about. And here's my question to people. Do we, do we, just because we live on this planet, do we really think that the world's going to stop changing? It's basically alive, man. It's going to, it's change is a constant. It's not going to stop because we, these little ants that are on the, on the outside of the crust of the planet is going to suddenly just go, oh, well, there's people there. Let's go ahead and just not get active and we'll just calm down. It doesn't work that way, guys. It never has. Um, and that's pretty much it. You got these, now, moving on to these, these people, these warmongers, look at this. Asteroid will definitely hit Earth and could wipe out London expert warns. What part is an expert? It's Express.com in the UK. There's no experts there. It's it's. Listen, you go to <laughs> you go to YouTube and there's nothing but fear mongering. Oh my God, Planet X is going to slam us in August. And this, listen, if there's going to be anything that's going to come out, it's going to be simply, um, it's going to be due to scientists are going to already forewarn you. Now let's suppose I'm wrong. And everybody just telling you nothing's going to happen is wrong. Let's just say we are. It wouldn't matter. Because you know what the government's going to do? This is the God's honest truth. I believe what's going to happen. What's going to happen is the government's going to go, okay, let's suppose there's a giant rock coming our way. It's the size of maybe a quarter the size of the United States. Forget it. Game over, man. It's over. It's all done. Because once it hits, it's going to cause disruption like you would not believe. Um, it's going to literally burn up whatever it hits. And it's going to make a huge crater there. You're then going to have a, um, if the ash and everything doesn't go around and kill everybody, or the shock from different earthquakes from that, because it'll trigger it off in every part of the world, uh, then you'll go into, all the debris will spread into the atmosphere and cause a nuclear winter. Um, so yeah, you're basically screwed. Um, why would they not tell you? Well, because we, I mean, just look around, just the average adult, and I'm not everybody's like this, but you got people, they're like overgrown kids. A speed limit on the highway alone. I mean, people can't even do the speed limit. Now, you know, and, and then here's a good thing that's even more important. When you look at, you know, these catastrophes that happen uh, in these countries, it, it's insane. I, I, you know, my heart goes out to everybody in uh, Puerto Rico, uh, people who lost their houses and stuff in Texas and Florida. My own daughter lives in Florida. So, you know, I, you know they prepared, but they did it at the last minute, which I'll get into in a second. Um, but... My heart goes out to these people, man. I mean, it's insane. But understand, it's like the government won't tell you because here's the thing. You see how people react when they can't get water or gas, right? They lose it. Picture them saying, oh, by the way, within another week, um, the world is going to get hit by a rock the size of half the size of the United States or wherever, um, you know, or the size of Russia. Uh, um, there would be total pandemonium. They would not say a word. And what difference would it make? Let's say you found out the last minute. I don't know. They decide to tell you the last day it's coming right at us. Um, call up your loved ones. Tell them you love them. And then the ones that you are closest to, hold them until the end of time. Till the, until the end. That's all there is to it. In other words, we can't change it. There's nothing we can do about it. Don't get frantic about it. It's it's not worth it. Um, most of these things are nothing but war. war. You know, I wouldn't say war, but uh, fear-mongering videos. I mean, they're talking about war. They're talking about, you know, World War Three. They're talking about... Oh, come on, please stop. It's, I can honestly tell you guys it's BS and it's not going to happen. Now, as far as like preparation, and this should be for everybody just in simple preparations. You know, I've, I've seen this a hundred times. In fact, I've been prepared for this. Um, wintertime, people go, well, we're going to have a bad snowstorm, chances are the power will go out. Mm, what about the guy that's driving in the snow? You know, your power's on and somehow he goes off the road and just plows right into a pole and takes your electricity out. And it's going to take eight hours to come back on. Okay. You should be prepared anyway. Never mind a huge storm, a uh, major power outage, whatever the reason may be, you should have simple stuff. Like this here. I just, I just picked this up. I've got, I've got these already. Look at this. I, I think it's still on it. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it's a sleazy $10 to buy this. I mean, little simple little lantern just turning on. I don't know if you guys will see this, but... I mean, yeah, major brightness there. Um... And you can see it's all the way around the thing. I mean, this is just a simple lantern. Oops. Okay, a little simple lantern, $10. Now, I've got lights in here. i got AP, uh, APCs, which is basically uninterruptible uh, battery backups. i got one here on my bench, um, which is 1,000 watts. I've got some in here in the bedroom, one in the bedroom, rather, for that, for the lights. And I've got two. I got one for my internet. It runs all my internet. And I've got, other, I've got like five of these things in the house. 
they they switch over power as flat as well as flash yeah as fast as you can blink your eyes they switch over i'm never in the dock now at some point you go okay well your battery's gonna run out that's true well i have big inverters i go plug it into my car stop my vehicle up and i can power that but i also have a generator even if you have a 1500 watt generator that's running watts you can run your refrigerator for a while and if you're running propane, it'll run even longer than that. So there's always ways to be prepared. You should always be, pre be prepared. You should have food in there you can eat that doesn't require cooking. I don't care if it's freaking Pop-Tarts. As long as you have something to eat and it's going to last you for X amount of time. Uh, you've got simple things like these little, you can get these little crank-up radios. You know, it's got a little hand crank, you know, and just, I mean, it's, it's simple stuff. You know, a little tiny antenna. But see, this is what people don't realize. When you turn this on, let me see if it'll do this here. I don't know if I have it on. Uh, let me see. We even got this on. Let me see. We can just crank it up a little bit. Whoop. That's basically the... Now I just cranked it up because the battery is pretty much dead. I don't use it unless I need it. But... I can crank it up when I need it. I've got extra, you know, it tells you, you get the little clock on there, nothing fancy. It tells you the temperature. Um, you know, again, hand crank. Get power in the way. And you can plug your phone into the back of it if you need extra power. Um, and something like this. I mean, if you guys got, you know, if you got a police scanner, get one. You can get them cheap. Uh, these little 2 meter 440. Channel mode. Uh, between, it's a 2 meter 440 and FM radio. So in other words, you can get these emergency broadcasts. You can listen to ham operators. They're talking because a lot of times during these hurricanes, and I remember this in the 90s, um, there was a buddy of mine from Puerto Rico and his family lived down there and they got wiped that time in the mid 90s. Um, and I was talking back and forth with this guy in the CB band. And the guy says, listen, there's no power here. There's no way to get communications here. But if you know somebody, give me their number. I'll try to call them and I'll see if they're all right. And I did do that and found out his family was safe. So, you know, I was glad to help as far as that went, but that's, sometimes that's all it is, man. Radio communications is only the way sometimes. You've got to be prepared. So, you know, this is just everyday, every, everyday things you should have in your house anyway. It doesn't have to be a catastrophe. I even asked my daughter that. I said, why don't you guys have a generator living down there? I mean, you know, you got at least, when you're living down there, you should have at least a small generator. You don't have to have this biggest thing you can find. Just something you could store away. It's in, you know, and that's it. I mean, come on. But as far as all this garbage here, all of this stuff here you're seeing on the screen, come on. It's just absolute trash. Uh, don't don't be sucked in by this garbage. It's nothing more than just... Ugh. I've seen so much of it lately, It's just it just blows my mind. But anyway, guys, that's all I wanted to tell you. Give you a little information about what's going on and all of this crap and people panicking about this, that, and the other. Um, I just, I'm blown away. I was just reading some of this and, like, one thing took me to another. Like, I was, you know, World War Three, then in... Planet X and Planet X, I believe, is out there, but it's not going to hit our Earth. Even if it came by Earth, it wouldn't slam Earth, and it's not going to happen next month. You know, we have asteroids and comets that pass by Earth all the time, and they don't say a word. Why? Because they're small, minute, and they're probably not even going to have a bearing on us anyway. Um, could a body going by our planet affect us? If it's big enough, yes. Um, and and what's the most you'll get out of it? Maybe. You might even get an earthquake or two out of it because of magnetic fields, but they're so far out, I wouldn't sweat it. It'd have to be the uh, planet the size of Jupiter coming right at us, and I know planet, planet X is supposed to be pretty large. That I wouldn't worry about, guys. I really wouldn't. It's, I know some, and I've read this, guys, on, on Facebook. People are genuinely concerned about this, like, oh, my God, what is going on? Oh, my God, we're going to die. No, 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 no. Please, stop. Nothing's going to happen. Go to bed tonight. Do what you normally do on a Saturday. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy your day off. Most people have the day off. I have a half a day I got to work, which is fine with me. That's that's nature of the beast. Um, you know, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to come out of work. I'm going to maybe go do some grocery shopping, hang out with the wife. And then we're going to just, I'm going to, you know, uh, go out there and mow the lawn. In other words, just another Saturday, just another day in paradise. And guess what? I'm going to go to bed and I'm going to enjoy the 24th. And you guys should do the same. Anyway, guys, got another really cool video coming up for you guys. I think you're going to enjoy this. This is going to absolutely show you that there is um, life on Mars, or there at least was another solid proof video. So stay tuned for that. That's coming up. Um, and I also have Billy's coming up prior to that one. So, guys, stay tuned for that. Anyway, have yourselves a good day. Have a good day tomorrow. Enjoy yourselves.
And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Peace.